Just three months ago, the Europa Clipper mission, set to launch aboard the Falcon Heavy, hit an unexpected roadblock due to radiation concerns with its payload. This unfortunate development left the space community disappointed, especially as it meant no Falcon Heavy launches for the rest of the year. Fortunately, the story has taken a positive turn. NASA just announced the updated launch schedule for Falcon Heavy, now set to carry out one of the agency's flagship missions. But why is Falcon Heavy so crucial to this mission? And why has it consistently remained NASA's top choice for high-profile launches? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Falcon Heavy is a rare heavy-lift rocket developed by SpaceX designed to meet the demand for launching large and heavy payloads into space. Because of this, although Falcon Heavy launches are much fewer compared to Falcon 9, with only 10 accounting for just 2% of Falcon 9's total, each Falcon Heavy mission carries immense importance. Every launch entrusted to Falcon Heavy either supports high-profile U.S. military ops or extremely costly government missions. Since 2019, just a year after its first launch, Falcon Heavy got five commercial contracts worth between $500 and $750 million, covering the rocket's development costs and probably then some. Excluding its maiden voyage in 2018, all other missions were purchased at prices ranging from $160 to $300 million, depending on the complexity and payload of the mission. Falcon Heavy's unique structure consists of three Falcon 9 boosters connected to form its first stage, allowing it to lift a payload of 53,000 kilos into orbit, almost twice as much as its closest competitor, Boeing's Delta IV Heavy. In addition to its impressive performance, Falcon Heavy captivates the audience with its stunning synchronized landing of its two to three boosters. What really sets Falcon Heavy apart in the space community is its perfect track record. It's never failed a mission, a factor that becomes increasingly important for contractors on the rocket launch market. Building on these achievements, and especially to strengthen its rep, Falcon Heavy is set to launch another mission carrying NASA's $5.2 billion payload, the Europa Clipper. If all goes according to plan, the launch is scheduled for October 10th, marking Falcon Heavy's second mission of the year and its 11th overall. Before diving deep into this mission, we got to clarify one thing. Europa Clipper was not originally intended for SpaceX's Falcon Heavy. Years ago, a Senate bill funding NASA's Europa Clipper mission required the use of the S. SLS for launch. However, by around 2021, a combination of factors led the agency to change its decision. One key reason was the realization that switching to Falcon Heavy could save them a lot of money. At the time, the acting director of the White House Budget Office stated that the estimate cost per SLS launch would exceed $2 billion once development was completed. By opting for a commercial launch vehicle, NASA could save over a billion and a half dollars, and that came after NASA's inspector general emphasized the need for flexibility in choosing launch vehicles. The push from the administration and NASA's leadership for this flexibility paid off, and SpaceX ultimately was selected to launch Europa Clipper. The cost of launching a spacecraft on a Falcon Heavy was just $178 million, a staggering difference compared to the estimated $2 billion for an SLS launch. Besides these cost savings, there were concerns about the availability of SLS. Delays had already pushed back its readiness, making it uncertain whether the rocket could launch by this year. While SLS might have allowed an earlier launch, potentially a year and a half sooner, those advantages were negated by delays. Additionally, NASA believed one of SLS's main contracts Contractors, Boeing would struggle to build another SLS core stage in time for the launch window. As a result, the agency decided to focus SLS resources on lunar missions and human exploration rather than Europa. If cost and readiness were not enough, there were also tech concerns about SLS's performance for the mission. The rocket's solid rocket boosters, or SRBs we'll call, created vibrations that could be damaging to the Europa Clipper payload. Redesigning the spacecraft to withstand these vibrations was estimated to cost $1 billion. Therefore, switching to Falcon Heavy not only saved about $3 billion in total, but also avoided costly redesigns and mission risks. So, what exactly is going to happen during the Europa Clipper mission? Once the Falcon Heavy rocket successfully delivers its payload into the correct orbit, the probe, which will head towards Jupiter to study its Galilean moon Europa, recently passed a crucial technical review called Key Decision Point E, clearing the way for its launch. Scientists believe that Jupiter's icy moon Europa has suitable conditions below its surface to support life, said NASA's Science Mission Director and Associate Administrator Nicola Fox on September 10th. Those ingredients are water, energy, and chemistry. Studying this by flying close to that moon and flying through the plumes that come up will help us better understand the astrobiology and the potential for habitable worlds beyond our own planet Earth. 
The spacecraft, developed by NASA in partnership with Johns Hopkins University's Applied Physics Lab, will take around five and a half years to go the 628 million kilometers to Europa. Once it gets there, it's going to spend approximately four years studying the moon and doing scientific experiments going as close as 25 kilometers to the surface. Space is not for the faint-hearted, and it's even more ambitious as this spacecraft, the largest that NASA's ever built for planetary exploration, will travel into the incredibly harsh radiation environment around Jupiter, said Fox. The launch clearance represents a sharp turnaround for the mission, which as recently as May was experiencing engineering issues. Specifically, engineers realized that Clipper's transistors, which controlled the flow of electricity on the spacecraft, could fail at lower radiation levels than previously thought. However, after an exhaustive round of recent testing and analysis, NASA decided that the spacecraft system should last the distance. We concluded after all this testing that during our orbits around Jupiter, while Europa Clipper does dip into the radiation environment, once it comes out, it comes out long enough to give those transistors the opportunity to heal and partially recover between flybys, said Europa Clipper project manager Jordan Evans. NASA has enclosed Europa Clipper's payload and other electronics in a thick-walled vault made of titanium and aluminum that will act as a radiation shield against most of the high-energy atomic particles and that hopefully slow down the degradation of the spacecraft systems. This is a tactic learned and used by NASA's Juno mission to Jupiter. Europa Clipper's mission's key objectives are to produce high-res images of Europa's surface, determine its composition, look for signs of recent or ongoing geological activity, measure the thickness of the moon's icy shell, search for subsurface lakes, and determine the depth and salinity of Europa's ocean. Our launch window opens October 10th, and the spacecraft will lift off from Kennedy Space Center, said Fox. We're excited and ready to carry out Europa's mission as planned, including the baseline science plan we had before we discovered the transistor issues. We're now confident we can deliver that mission. If a successful and on-time launch is delivered, Europa Clipper is set to reach Jupiter by 2030, with a spacecraft performing its orbital burn after April 11, 2030. During the time between launch and its arrival on Jupiter, the spacecraft will execute flybys of Earth and Mars, maneuvers known as gravity assists, which help change the spacecraft's speed and trajectory to get to Jupiter all while conserving fuel. While in orbit around Jupiter, the spacecraft will conduct up to 45 to 50 flybys of Europa, coming as close as 25 kilometers to the icy smooth surface of the Moon. So, what would happen if Europa Clipper could prove the existence of this ocean and provide evidence of life on the moon? What are the next steps, and will NASA and other space agencies investigate the possibility of a Europa lander in the future? One of the things that I worked on in addition to Europa Clipper was a Europa lander mission concept, which unfortunately was not chosen to go forward in this latest decade survey. One of the things that came out of that project, though, is this recon focus group. And as part of the focus group, we want to make sure that Europa Clipper collects the right kind of data set so that a future mission lands on Europa can use that data to land. So one of the things that we've done is we've looked at the trajectory that Europa Clipper will fly and the details of each of the closer flybys, and there's only a handful of those that actually meet our criteria for for what we think a future mission will need to have to perform a landing. And those are things like resolution, but also viewing geometry and illumination angle, which is based on our experience with landing on places like Mars. So since we'll be using a terrain relative navigation and our hazard avoidance and stuff like that, whatever data set we get from Europa Clipper is the data set that will be used to help pick a landing site for a future landing mission. That's what Phillips, a project scientist, said, who's over at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Even if that landing mission is 20 or 30 years off in the future, you're going to want to make sure that we have the data set in the bag. That's something we'll make sure Europa Clipper does, which is to do the best job it can collecting a reconnaissance data set for future use. Europa Clipper is certainly going to be one of the most anticipated and important missions of this decade and decades to come. Hopefully, this mission will be the first of many future missions to the outer solar system aimed at confirming the habitability of several moons around Jupiter and Saturn. Working alongside Europa Clipper at Jupiter will be ESA's Jupiter Icy Moons Explorer, commonly referred to as JUICE, which plans to study not just Europa, but also Jupiter's other moons. Together, these two missions will provide scientists with more data and images than ever before on the icy moons in our solar system, paving the way for new missions and concepts to explore deeper into the solar system and the search for life. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.